welcome back to a new video episode on chemistry made easy with bright edo in today's video lesson i'll be teaching on radioactivity calculations whereby i'll be focusing on just the relationship between half-life and decay constant so first thing first what is the symbol of half-life because half-life here is a very very important term when studying radioactivity and it must be noted that half-life is given with the symbol t half so it means that it is just a symbol it is not like we are using one over two to solve here t half is a symbol so the symbol for half-life is t half now what about decay constant Decay constant is given with this symbol and it is lambda. Now, another thing we must know here is what is the SI unit for half life? Half life has various SI units dependent on the question. Now, half life can be in seconds, half life can be in minutes, half life can be in days. Half-life can be in weeks. Half-life can be in years. So it is dependent on the question we know the SI unit for the half-life. Now, what is the SI unit for decay constant? Because all of these things are very important when solving problems on radioactivity. So we can be able to locate or determine the half-life or the decay constant in the question. So when we start solving, it's very easy. Now, you can see here that I said half-life can be in seconds, half-life can be in minutes, half-life can be in days, half-life can be in weeks, and also half-life can be in years. Now, for decay constant, decay constant SI unit is a function of the half-life. So what does it mean? It means that before we know the correct SI unit for the decay constant, which is given with lambda, we need to know the SI unit for the half-life. Now, this is what I mean. So, for the decay constant, for instance, half-life is given in seconds. Definitely, the decay constant SI unit will be in seconds raised to the power of minus 1. Okay, hold on. What will be the SI unit for the decay constant according to the half-life being in minutes now? It is minutes raised to the power of minus 1. Hold on. And same applies to day. So, it is day raised to the power of minus 1. Same applies to weeks, it is weeks raised to the power of minus 1. Same applies to years, it is years raised to the power of minus 1. So, how is the SI unit for the decay constant pronounced? So, for instance, we want to pronounce seconds raised to the power of minus 1, we just say per seconds. So, it means that if the SI unit for the half-life is in seconds, what will be the SI unit for the decay constant? It becomes per seconds. If the half-life SI unit is in minutes, what becomes the SI unit for the decay constant? It becomes per minute. In days, per days. In week, per week. In years, per years. So basically, they are pronounced, you just add per seconds. Per minutes. Per days. Per weeks. And per years. So you can see basically, for we to get the um, SI unit for the decay constant, we need to know the correct SI unit for the half-life. Okay, so let's quickly move over to the formula that relates half-life and decay constant. Because this formula will be very, very important when solving practice problems. So let's quickly move over to that. Now, the formula that relates half-life and decay constant is, is simply T half. Remember, T half is half life. And I said we don't use the half to solve. It is just a symbol, like symbol A, B, C. It is just a symbol. So T half is equal to 0 0.693 over decay constant. Recall, decay constant basically, SI unit is gotten from the SI unit for the half life. So basically, for we to get the SI unit for the decay constant, it is a function of the half life. Now, this formula is very, very important 
when solving problems under radioactivity. This formula is very, very important. So let's quickly move over to question one. Let's apply the formula. Now let's quickly move over to the first question. Now the question says, calculate the half-life of a radioactive isotope given the decay constant to be 0.145 per minute. So definitely, since the SI unit for the decay constant is in per minute, what becomes the SI unit for the half-life? It is minutes because I said both of them are a function of each other. Because for we to get the S sign for one, we need to know the S sign for the other. So since here is a minute, sorry, per minute, the S sign for our half life, which we have to calculate, will be in minutes. If here was in per weeks, S sign unit for the half life we have to calculate now will be in weeks. So recall the formula. Let's solve. The formula that relates half-life and decay constant is basically T half is equal to 0.693 over decay constant. Now, the question is asking us to get the half-life. And what is the decay constant? It is basically 0.145 per minute. So, basically, we are asked to get the half-life. Very easy. It just become we impute uh, the parameter so 0.693 over what is the value for the decay constant? It is this, which is 0.145 per minute. So let's press the calculator and get the correct answer for the half life in minutes. So basically, the half life of the radioactive isotope becomes 4.78 minutes. So you can see that the decay constant SI unit was in per minute. So definitely, the half life SI unit should be in minutes. So this is the correct answer to the question. So let's quickly move over to question next, which is question two. So this is question two, and it says, calculate the decay constant of a radionuclide given the half-life to be 30 hours. What does it mean? It means that our decay constant SI unit sh should be the function or should be a function of the half-life SI unit. Now, since the half-life SI unit is in hours, definitely the decay constant SI unit becomes per hours. So let's quickly solve. We recall the formula, which is T1 over 2 is equal to 0 0.693 over the decay constant. Now, making decay constant subject of formula, it becomes 0 0.693 over the half-life. So what is the half-life given in the question? It is 30 hours. So it becomes 0 0.693 over 30 hours. Let's press our calculator and get the answer for the decay constant. And definitely the SIN becomes per hour. So 0 0.693 over 30, we get um, 0 0.0231 per hours. So this is the correct answer to the question. So let's quickly move over to the next question. Now let's quickly move over to the third question. And the question says, the half-life of a radioisotope was determined to be two years. Determine its decay constant in per weeks. So this question is very smart. When you are to solve questions like this, you have to be careful. Okay, you don't just apply and use formula and get answer. We have to be very careful. Now, if we check carefully, you can see here that the half-life SI unit is in years. But they are now asking us to get the decay constant in per weeks. And if we check, years and weeks does not actually re relate. We have to make sure that both of their SI units will be in the same form. Now, this is what I mean. First thing first, the half-life in the question is two years. And 
and they said provide answer of the decay constant in per weeks. That means we are looking for our answer in per weeks. Definitely to make it the same weeks and weeks. Now we are to convert these two years to weeks. Recall, recall, 52 weeks makes a year. So 52 weeks is equal to one year. How many weeks we are to get? Okay, when we now have how many, how many years? Two years. So definitely we are to convert two years to weeks. So X weeks is equal to 52 times 2 over 1. That gives us 104 weeks. So you can see we've actually gotten our half-life or converted the half-life from years to weeks. Because actually when we use years, we won't get an answer and that answer will be wrong. So, let's impute our formula. So, the question is asking not to get the key constant. Because I said T half is equal to 0 0.693 over the K constant. Making the K constant subject of formula, it becomes 0 0.693 all over T1 over 2, which is the T half and the half life. So, definitely 0 0.693 all over the half life. Are we using two years or one or four weeks? One or four weeks because the answer said put your answer in per weeks. So definitely zero, sorry, one or four weeks. Okay, will now be equal to let's input in our calculator and get the answer. So 0 0.693 all over 104 weeks, we get 0 0.0067. Per weeks okay per weeks so definitely this is the correct answer to this question because most person when you just see questions like this you just impute in your formula and get answer actually it will not be correct because the question stated determine your answer in per week so we have to convert our applet from yes to weeks before can I impute in formula and get the correct answer now let me quickly put the question 4 on the board so you provide the answer in the comment section below now this is the question you'll be solving and you provide the answer in the comment section below and i believe now you now understand the relationship between half-life and the k constant if you like this video subscribe to this channel and share my videos to friends thank you very much god bless you all